On October 1st, something changed within me. I can't place my finger on it, but for some reason I've been in a very spooky mood. Since this is the case, I found myself playing a bunch of spooky indie games that I would like to share with all of you. Now keep in mind, I'm not a huge fan of jump scares, so this list will be more so based on vibes rather than actual scares. It's kind of like hot sauce. I like the taste and I may like it a little bit spicy, but sometimes less is more, and sometimes I prefer the taste of the hot sauce than the actual spice. So imagine Farmville, but first person and drenched in a spooky atmosphere. On the surface, this concept may seem quite surface level, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. While playing, there are hints that there is something out there watching you as you tend your crops. Though personally for me in the demo, I never ran into any monsters. That's not to say that there aren't any, since weird occurrences happen at your cabin in the middle of nowhere. And don't even think about escaping because well, your character quite literally threw away the key. Now this game has a lot more story than I anticipated. This helps break up the gameplay with something different to keep the experience constantly mysterious. I'm not going to say a whole lot more to this point, but it definitely enhances the gameplay. If you like a slower paced narrative game with sudden slight spooks, I'd recommend this one. Now this one is very obvious why I have an affinity for it, and it's due to the graphics. This is a low poly PS1 inspired first person haunted maze. Technically, there is one jump scare, but personally, I think this game is better without it, and I will explain why. When you first enter this building, you don't know where you are. Scattered about are these notes of past travelers who have documented their own experiences. In order to progress, you can actually use these notes as mental checkpoints to figure out if you've been to an area or not, especially to find certain puzzles that need to be solved in order to escape. The entire time this is happening, there is a monster taunting you in the form of narration on screen. He occasionally appears for a few seconds only to disappear, leading you deeper into his trap. We could escape, but we need a key first. I love this specific part of the game and the atmosphere it portrays. However, after finding the key, the tone completely shifts and now you're basically playing a deadly game of tag. Personally, I'm all for spooky vibes. But I'm not a huge fan of jump scares, so this game is just the perfect representation of that concept. I mentioned this game in a previous video. Thank you for the support on that, by the way. During that video, I talked about the cosmic horror, but currently, I want to mention every other aspect to this demo. You wake up in a house, and once you leave, the world slowly morphs into this bleak despair. Occasionally, you must solve an environmental puzzle like picking up an axe and chopping a tree to progress the story. And by story, I mean a series of events you find yourself in because this game is very abstract. Due to its abstract nature, you can't help but mentally dissect what this place is and why it becomes more deranged the further you progress. Some things don't make sense, but it is intentional, like how when you die, you respawn back in the house, except the house moves depending on where you die, and then disappears when you try to recall where you were, as if there is something that is keeping you here, and keeping you alive. Utoma recommends you use a controller to play and has a very creepy aesthetic already. This is a fast platformer where you can grapple onto things. I absolutely love this dark, gritty art style. Out of all these platformers I've played so far by this publisher, this one stands out to me the most and feels the most polished and stylized. We can also throw attacks to oncoming enemies, and the boss fight is actually really challenging. That specific character moves in very strange, out of this world ways, and is the most unique boss fight I've stumbled across. This is probably the shortest game on the list, but it is easily one of the best, and does so much in so little time. Inward Eye was the game that really helped me put me in a spooky mood and doesn't rely on jump scares whatsoever. Inward Eye is a horror cooking game. 
Similar to We Harvest Shadows, this game has a core gameplay mechanic and then shows a sliver of story. In this game, we cook and then listen to a ghost. Simple in concept, however, once you finish the game, you understand it from a whole different perspective. You play as a man who cooks at your house while talking to yourself, and once you start cooking, the ghosts appear, curious as to what kind of food you've made. Apparently, it's the ghost's favorite, and you know it's the ghost's favorite. The ghost itself is detailed so elegantly, it's visually opaque, yet looks like a substance such as sound waves or water that have taken the shape of a human-like creature. It portrays emotions in the form of colors, which definitely plays later into the story. Honestly, if I explain this game more, it would spoil the experience, so check it out. It's free on itch.io. Leap of Sins is like if you took hot lava but made it like hell themed and horror themed and really, really freaking difficult. Oh my gosh, dude. This game is so hard. If you want a super hard parkour game, I recommend it. I'm still trying to beat it, <laughs> or at least the demo, but man, it is brutal, let me tell ya. Especially because of the hitboxes and whenever you sprint, you never feel like you have enough sprint. So that's like most of the deaths right there. But man, huh. if you want a horror themed parkour game, definitely try Leap of Sins. If you like punishing games, oh, definitely try it. Pager is a pretty interesting concept. I don't know if I would necessarily consider it horror, but it is a little spooky once you think of the concept. You are a person that is listening to this pager and you have to do exactly what it says, otherwise you have to restart. And the fact that there are these security cameras just plastered everywhere, constantly watching you, gives you kind of this feeling of that you are serving some overlord, some boss that you've never met before, but you're just following these rules, otherwise, there will be consequences. I also love that it's just in black and white. It's super minimal with the colors, but that kind of makes it a little bit more eerie. It's basically this like eerie kind of puzzle game. If you consider the Twilight Zone to be horror, then this would also be horror in the sense of you don't fully understand who is narrating your journey. 